feet sound before him. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. There's a sweet expression on each face. And I know it is the spirit of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for all these blessings, we lift our hearts with prayers. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Heavenly Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, saying thank you, Lord, for letting us see another Sunday morning. Lord, somebody didn't wake up this morning. Yes. Lord, somebody is grieving right now today because they lost a love. Father God, we ask that you reach down and touch and let them know that you are in control of everything. Lord, let them know that you are out and made for the beginning and the end. Let them know that you are the master here. Yes. Yeah. 
to the service of uh, giving. Yes, Lord. And if you have your givings, your tithes and offerings that you want to give to the Lord, repeat this giving, this litany with me. All that I have, the Lord has provided. All that I have, the Lord has provided. As an act of faith, and as an act of faith, and obedience to, to the word of God, and obedience to the word of God, I prayerfully, I prayerfully and cheerfully, and cheerfully give my tithes, give my tithes and offerings, and, offer, and receive, and receive, and receive, and receive, and receive, and receive my blessings, my blessings from the Lord. Father God, we ask you to accept the tithes and offerings that we're about to give to you. Yes. Lord, we ask you to use it for the upbuilding of the kingdom. Thank you. Bless those that have not to give, but you know their heart, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for giving us the money to give back to you of the first day. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. Amen. Now we will have our scripture reading. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 9th to 10th verse. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 9th to 10th verse. Reading uh, the international, New International Version. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore will I boast, I will boast all more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearer and the doer of his holy word. Bless you, God. At this time, we have a song of preparation by the music ministry, followed by the
to go one more time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
1036, I think it's 1036, Tommy's Road, here in the city of Goldsboro. And I apologize, it's 1065, Tommy's Road, here in the city of Goldsboro, North Carolina. If you still need your COVID-19 testing or your vaccinations, please go by Best Road. Well, our good friend uh, and partner in the ministry, uh, Pastor Joe Jackson, is a wonderful, wonderful pastor. Amen. Amen. Reverend Paul read the scripture for us this morning from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 12, verse 9 and 10. And the Lord put it in my spirit some weeks ago to do a series on healing. Because I believe uh, that in this time in which we live, there are a lot of hearts that have been broken. There are a lot of spirits that have been wounded. Yeah. Not only because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic or coronavirus, but because of all the senseless uh, social illnesses of killing of our young black boys. And a lot of the things that's plaguing our community and our society mm -hmm. that are not pleasing to God. Yeah. So God put it in my spirit. It says, uh, Winfred, I want you to preach a series on healing so the people can know that I still care and I still love them. Amen. So the Lord led us to the scripture Reverend Hall uh, read it for us this morning from 2 Corinthians again, tw chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. And this is part one of a three-part series entitled Healing Has Come to You. And from that particular scripture, verse number 10, it reads, Paul says, that's why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, mm -hmm. in difficulties. Listen, for when I am weak, then am I strong. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Mm -hmm. And I want to use for a subject uh, this morning, and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit, a subject entitled, How Are You Feeling? How are you feeling? Yes. You know, Brother Thomas, the first question we usually ask people after sickness has invaded their body mm -hmm. and their, feel, their healing process has begun. One of the questions we used to ask them is, how are you feeling? Uh -huh. Those of us who have visited the hospitals of friends and loved ones, those of us who cannot make a personal visit because of coronavirus, but call or text people lying on their beds of affliction, ask the question, how are you feeling? You see, my brothers and sisters that are watching and listening, we are facing severe health issues and societal calamities during this pandemic season. And as we look at the destruction and chaos in our personal and community life, many people are left wondering, Lord, what is going on? Yeah. And what will God do about it? During these personal societal illnesses, we sometimes find it difficult to bring forth the glorious light of Christ that dwells inside of us. Yeah. Yes, during this pandemic season, some of y'all, some of all of us, I mean all of us, all of us, every last one of us, yeah. have experienced jobs phasing out. And some people are left not knowing how to pay their bills. Yes, yes. Some people have experienced the loss of loved ones and they are dealing with physical struggles. Uh -huh. During this pandemic season, some people have gone through mental struggles or depression, suicidal thoughts. Yes. There are some people, my dear brothers and sisters, during this season of pandemic, they can find no joy. Yeah. They have no peace. Yeah. They have no contentment. Mm -hmm. Listen, 
And when you don't have joy and peace and contentment, dear brothers and sisters, you can't think like we used to. We can't read and meditate on the Word of God like we used to. Can't pray like we used to. Can't sing like we used to. Can't Holy Ghost dance like we used to. Cannot concentrate on our work like we used to. You can't preach with power. You can't teach with conviction. Why? Because we are experiencing hardships, yeah. trials, and tribulations during this pandemic season. In other words, how do we overcome these personal and societal weaknesses and these struggling times in which we live? Listen, how can we be weak and strong at the same time? Yeah. How can we be weak and strong at the same time? Right. Now some English scholars would say, well, Pastor Gallon, this is what we would call an oxymoron statement where you have two words that are contradicting one another. Yeah. But here it is again. How can you be weak and strong at the same time? But I find it to be more than an English problem. But I find it to be impacted with spiritual truth. Listen to the words and look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had to deal with some ministry issues that weakened him. Yes, sir. Paul is who he is because of his unique one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus Christ. This encounter with Jesus changed him and ultimately the world in which he lived. Paul took the necessary measures in proving that the Lord had commissioned him and that the Lord had chosen him as a vessel to spread the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Y'all stay with me here. Paul preached in his day. He preached that Jesus' death and his resurrection on the third day morning was the ultimate sacrifice by God to save all of us. Yes, Paul starts to boast of his spiritual attributes, which end up being the cause and effect of his weaknesses. Y'all yeah. stay with me here. Y'all pray with me. I'm going to let you go when I let you go. Y'all stay with me here. Paul says the cause and effect of his weaknesses. Yes. He says here in the text, if you read the whole text, he says, I had more imprisonments. I had countless beatings, often near death. Yeah. Paul says to us, five times I received 40 stripes from the Jews. Yeah. Three times, he tells us this morning, I was beaten with rods. He says, one time I was stoned at Lystra. They thought I was dead, and they threw me out of the city, but I got up and went back and continued to preach Jesus. Yeah. Paul said, this was my weaknesses, Brother Paul. He said, my weaknesses was that I was in danger from rivers. Yeah. Danger from robbers. Yeah. From my own people, they turned against me. From the Gentiles, he says, I was danger at sea. I had to deal with false teachers. I toiled with hardships. Paul said, I had sleepless nights. Paul said, there was sometimes in my ministry, I was hungry. He said, sometimes I was thirsty. Paul says, I went without food, cold, and exposed to the winter, exposed to the heat. Had been pressures from setting up all my churches. He says, all of these weaknesses were part of the commission mandate by God to preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to tell you, we too today, if you live long enough, and you live on Christ long enough, we too, brothers and sisters, we will experience weak moments in our life. Yes. I don't care how saved or how long you've been saved, and I believe you've been saved this morning, but it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, all of God's children yes. are going to go through times of weaknesses. Yes. Weaknesses are our sins. 
whether it's sin of omission or sin of commission, all of us have the witness of sin. Yes. Sin is like a physical wound that needs the healing from God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We are all under attack by the prince of this world. We are all under attack by Satan. And Satan is seeking to weaken us. Yes. All of us brothers and sisters that are watching, that are listening, all of us become weary and weak like Paul because ministry, Brother Thomas, it takes a toll on all of us. Yes. Especially during this pandemic yes. season. Yes. With anxieties increasing, from facing the unknown in this coronavirus, experiencing hardship from managing symptoms of underlying health concerns, doubt and frustration bubbling up because we cannot attend a church. We cannot come back to Mount Calvary or whatever church you attend. You cannot come back like we used to. And in our hearts, we really want to get together. We really want to come back to lift our hands. We really want to come back to church to sing and to preach and to teach. But it becomes our weakness because we cannot. That's right. Uh -huh. Sometimes trusting too much in this world's luxury. Causes us to forget our need for God. Yeah. You pray to God, brothers and sisters, and there's nothing wrong with praying to God to have a nice house. And it's good to have a nice house. It's nothing wrong with having the finer things of life. It's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes when God blesses us with those things, we forget and contract amnesia about who gave it to us. So sometimes. We are made weak and we have weak moments so we can really know who can who we can really rely on when we get weak sometimes. And sometimes I realize it's not in the abundance of life and that's good, but sometimes it's not in the abundance of life when we can see Jesus clearly. It's usually during those weak moments. So Paul says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 9. Paul says, so he won't get beside himself. Uh -huh. Paul says, he experienced a heavenly vision and he had a physical ailment. He called it a thorn in his flesh. Yeah. That corrects and helps him to understand that the revelation of Christ given to him was not about his human weaknesses, but about the sufficiency of Christ's power in him to enable him to overcome. And what Paul is saying, Paul said, I prayed three times for the Lord to remove this thorn in his flesh. It wasn't an actual thorn, it was his human weakness. Yeah. Right? But the Lord tells him, Brother Thomas, he said, I'm not going to remove it, but I want you to know that my grace is sufficient yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. to help you carry on. And this is what God says after that. God said, don't worry about your weakness, concentrate on me. Because yeah. my sufficiency and my grace and my mercy, even when you're weak, then I'm not strong. Yeah. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power, listen to what God says to him. He says, my power is made perfect in your weakness. That's right. In other words, the power of God proves and accomplishes itself when we are experiencing our worst season. We should be able to see God more clearly now in this pandemic because all of us are hurting. Yeah. Whether you have contracted the COVID-19 or not, whether you lost loved ones, unfortunately, in this COVID-19 or not, all of us, when one suffer, guess what? All of us. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, the power of God proves and accomplishes itself. So whenever you and I come to those weak moments in life, we all get weak sometimes. you got to remember like Paul says, like God says to Paul, God says my grace is sufficient to help us overcome. Because I want to tell you, as I begin to take my seat, I want to tell you that all of us, we're going to have seasons and moments of uncertainty. We are not only uncertain about what tomorrow will bring, but sometimes we are uncertain about what the next minute will bring. We are all going to have times of confusion. That's right. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, in this time of uncertainty, mm. in this time of confusion, I'm going to tell you that's when God is at His best. So, sir. In most cases, God's sufficient grace manifests itself are shown perfect in us when we are depleted of our own self-satisfaction. Mm -hmm. God's grace is perfect in us when we are depleted of our own self-dependency.
Well, God's grace is more about it. Yes. Remember that the ministry of God hasn't really been about us. We're all in God's message carries. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. Uh -huh. See, we become stronger not for our sake, but we become stronger because God knows that being his message carrier, it is a tedious journey. Yeah, yeah. And God wants to build our faith and our trust that God is able to see us through. Mm. And I don't know how many witnesses I have today, but I want to tell you, it makes a little bit more sense now that when I'm weak, then I'm strong because God says your weaknesses will help you and I focus more on Him. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And the more we focus on God, the stronger we become. We may get sick every now and then, but God is so much stronger. We may get weak every now and then, but God is so much powerful. And that's what Paul says. That's what Paul says in verse number 10. That's why for Christ's sake. Paul says, I delight in weaknesses. In insults. In hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. Yeah. Paul says, For when I am weak, then am I strong. Therefore, we surrender our weakness to the power of Christ, who can give us the healing prescription. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever we get sick, Every now and then, we got to go to the pharmacy. And the pharmacist will give us a prescription to help us in our weakness. Can I get a witness? And I want to tell you, and I want to ask you the question again, how are you feeling? Now that we have taken God's prescription, and now that we feel a little better now, I got to ask you the question again. How are you feeling? Well, I want to say good day to you. God bless you real good. But I got to tell you how I feel. I feel, I feel all right. I, I cannot get a witness. I, I know sometimes in my life, I, I know I don't feel so well. I, but when I realize that the sufficiency of Christ, I, it helps to heal my body. I, I want to tell somebody this morning, I, I feel good. I feel good this morning because I realize that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It makes me feel mighty good. Or can I get a witness? I'm sure that when I put it in the hands of God, that God will make it all right. It makes me feel real good this morning. I don't know about you, but I got to ask you another question.
your strongest. That's a spiritual truth that's laid and embodied in the sufficiency of Christ. Yes, sir. That he's able to keep us. He's able to guide us. He's able to strengthen us. He's able to heal us. Come on. How are you feeling? Yes, sir. You say, well, Pastor, I, I had a migraine when I woke up this morning. And I took the prescriptions that the doctors gave me because my migraine was killing me this morning. Yeah. And you take your medicine, but there's another doctor yeah. who's able to heal you That's right, of yeah. your migraine. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? You said, well, Pastor, I had a trial this week on my job. I had a total war of my spirit to do right or to do wrong. And it weakened me. But you got to hold on. And you got to hold on to what God says. And what Jesus says in his word. He says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. I am able to help you. Yes, sir. He says, I am the shepherd. Why don't you come on and follow me? Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, Pastor, you know, you don't know how I'm feeling. I, I've been going through some trials, not only in my physical, but I've been going through some trials in my home, on my job, in my community, even having trouble in my church. I don't know what to do. It weakens me. But I'm going to tell you, when you're weak, you got to trust that God is able. That's right. Paul says, I boast in my weaknesses. He says, I boast in them. Mm -hmm. And meaning that I, I boast in them because I know there's somebody. He said, well, now it makes a little sense to me, Pastor. It's really not a contradictory statement. It's a statement about the sufficiency right. of Jesus Christ right. in my life. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank you. For allowing us to understand mm -hmm. that even in our weakest season, in our weakest moments, that you're able to deliver us. Father, we come trusting in your sufficiency. Because, God, you are sufficient, effective, and effective to heal us of all of our ailments that try to bring us down. Father, there's somebody this morning that's calling on you. There's somebody that's been calling on you, God, for a long time. And it seems like their prayers have not been answered, but they just got to hold on because your grace is sufficient. Father, there's somebody that's lost this morning. They're reaching out to heaven. They're reaching out seeking your face. And for those who are lost, for those who do not know you, the free part of the sin, God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that they would lift their hands and lift their voices right now under the sound of my voice to confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God, we want them to be saved. We want them to be baptized. Oh, yeah.
of the sermon was how do you feel? Well, I tell you, since I know I got the Holy Ghost, I feel good. Yes, sir. Yeah. But it's not right. just about Pastor Gallon, it's about you too. That's right, sir. I don't want to feel good without you feeling good. So I'm we all, all right. feel good together. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. When we are weak, then God makes us strong. Yes, he does. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory. Thank you for this morning, Father. I just thank you. And I want you to continue to pray, not only for yourselves and your families, continue to pray for the church of God, pray for all of those, even pray for your enemies, those you know that may not care a lot about you, pray for them anyway, yes. because your prayers can help save them, yes. amen. Pray for our community, pray for the family that just lost their son up in, uh, excuse me, in Minnesota, I'm sorry. Mr. Dante Wright, we want to pray for his family. And not only he, but all those who have lost their lives to senseless killings and deaths in our community and in our society. Uh, we need the Lord. And I want to tell you, you don't know how much you need God until you realize he's all you got. And so we just want to say that to you. May God continue to bless you. May heaven continue to smile on you as our prayer. And I know there's nothing else to be said this morning. May God continue to uh, help you to have a wonderful and awesome day. Thomas and Mother, for us to get out of here, let's, let's, uh, let's sing this, I guess. You know, I know we're not uh, at church, but you know my favorite song is Reach Out and Touch. So we're going to sing that. And I know that we're not here in church, but we still can reach out and touch each other by spirit. Because all we have is each other. Now make this work